Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live 10 at 10. We start with new information for you tonight as one of two people charged in the death of Savannah Greywind has pleaded not guilty to the charges against him. The plea from William Hain comes one week before he was set to appear in court for a preliminary hearing. Broadcast reports indicate that Haynes' lawyer entered the written pleas to conspiracy to commit murder, kidnapping, and giving false information to officers. Hain is now scheduled to be back in court in December. His girlfriend, Brooke Cruz, is scheduled to appear in court on the same charges Thursday. The two lived in the same apartment building as Savannah Greywind. Greywind's newborn was found in their apartment days after Savannah disappeared. Savannah's body was found in the Red River. These days, you're always a little more careful than you were some years ago when someone was at the door that you don't know. It's something we know could happen to us any time, any day. Someone going door to door offering to sell you something or asking for help. We're also aware that scammers are constantly out on the prowl looking to trick you into giving up your information or your hard-earned money. So how do you know if the next time a stranger rings your doorbell that they're legit? Valley News Team's Wally Casey looks into it usually try and be polite because I'm from Fargo. Mark Langseth has lived in Fargo for most of his life and has dealt with his fair share of door-to-door -door salesmen, but didn't know a vital question experts say you should ask salesmen. I don't know that I've ever asked to see a license. The Fargo Police Department posted this on next door, a warning to neighbors to beware of a group selling cleaning products door-to-door -door without a license. One woman we spoke with said when she told the men she was uninterested, they were rude to her and threatened to return. I mean, I, that's a little sketchy. But it's not just sketchy, it's illegal. When somebody knocks on the door, no matter what they're selling, if it's product or service, they should have a license number. Heather Johnson of the Better Business Bureau says the seller has to have a transient vendor license, which you can verify online through the Secretary of State's website. And you should verify the product, too. Go to your computer and take a look. Just make sure you do your research. The BBB encourages homeowners to never invite a door-to-door -door salesperson inside or to give out any personal information. From our standpoint, we encourage people not to do business with door-to-door -door salesmen. And Mark says he already knows what he'll kindly tell the next door-to-door -door salesman, especially if they don't have a license. No, I'm really not interested. Thanks for your time and, and good luck. From Fargo, Molly Casey, Valley News Live. Fargo police encourage residents to report unlicensed salesmen by calling their non-emergency line and the BBB encourages residents to report it on their website as well. It was a somber day in the Crookston area. School leaders say a sixth grader took his own life. Last night, police responded to an unresponsive 11-year-old boy. The Crookston PD is investigating. The school wants their students to feel supported. The superintendent says counselors and pastors were on hand at school today, some kids opting to head home for the day. School leaders from across the region say the social challenges kids are facing are harder today than they have ever been. Can we learn for, for, for next time? You know, hopefully there never is a next time, but sadly these things seem to be happening more than ever before. And, and whatever we do in schools, we, we try to do it better the next time. School leaders say there are resources available and parents should reach out if they feel their children need help. Our tax code is a giant self-inflicted economic wound. It was three weeks to the day since President Trump stopped in Mandan to pitch for tax reform. Today, we learned more about the plans he and his fellow Republicans have. It's a sweeping nearly $6 trillion tax cut that would deeply reduce taxes for corporations, nearly double the standard deduction used by most Americans, and simplify everyone's brackets. The GOP proposal calls for reducing income tax rates by into three brackets of 12%, 25%, and 35%. But it leaves the income ranges for those brackets up to tax committees. We're going to cut taxes for the middle class, make the tax code simpler and more fair for everyday Americans, and we are going to bring back the jobs and wealth that have left our country, and most people thought left our country for good. President Trump declares the plan would provide badly needed tax relief for the middle class. What wasn't explained is how it would be paid for and how much it might add to the soaring $20 trillion national debt. 
The Trump administration is dramatically reducing the number of refugees allowed to resettle in the United States, bringing the number to the lowest in decades for the U.S. refugee admission program. The U.S. plans to admit no more than 45,000 refugees in the coming year, and there are regional caps. For example, Africa will receive the largest allotment of 19,000 refugees. The next highest number goes to the Middle East and South Asia with 17,500 slots. East Asia, Europe, Latin America and the Caribbean are also included. Unlike in previous years, this cap does not include a so-called unallocated reserve of 14,000 refugees that could come from any region. We have two updates tonight regarding the 32nd Avenue South I-29 bridge widening project. The northwest off-ramp sending traffic south on I-29, that's going to open tomorrow morning. Also, traffic will be split across the Interstate 29 bridge to allow work to begin in the median area of the bridge deck. Now keep in mind that throughout the rest of the project work in October, you should expect for the short-term lane changes based on daily project needs. Tonight was the official ribbon cutting for the U32 building on 32nd Avenue North in Fargo. Staff were on hand to give tours of the building and amenities. Although ideal for students going to NDSU, the complex is made to become a home to a number of community members, including young professionals and people working around North Fargo. We're so excited for today. It's been a lot of anticipation and we're excited for the food trucks and the kids zone and we're excited for the North Fargo neighbors to come and for our owners to see it and for our residents to really enjoy it and have a great time. Those on hand for the ceremony included Fargo Mayor Tim Mahoney, NDSU President Dean Brashani and other dignitaries. Hearty appetites here at home helped hurricane victims. Tonight, Texas Roadhouse on 13th Avenue South partnered with the American Red Cross, this event drawing a packed house. 100% of the profits tonight will go to the Red Cross and other local organizations to help communities in need. It was part of a national effort for Texas Roadhouse. More than, more than 500 restaurants across the country participated. To be able to join with the rest of the company uh, and do something on this widespread and uh, generate hundreds of thousands of dollars to help the people in need is just, it's amazing. Texas Roadhouse as a whole has provided more than 50,000 meals to shelters and first responders locally in Texas and Florida, this according to the company.